independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. And we need to march on the Capitol today. We are going to take our country back. We're coming for you, and we're going to have a good time doing it. Let's have trial by combat. You'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength. We're going to walk down, and I'll be there with you to the Capitol. In two hours, this woman will be dead. We are now walking down the inaugural path to the Capitol building. Oh, there we go. The U.S. Capitol has been breached. I call on President Trump to go on national television now and demand an end to this siege. We love you. You're very special. Our incredible journey is only just beginning. Ah, what a week. And what do we have in store? I don't know. The reality is, is they're going to be talking about is, is there very, they're pushing Pence to 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 evoke the 25th get the cabinet together and essentially remove him from office for the next 9 days it's kind of what they're hoping for impeachment of course nothing is 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 off the table and uh, impeachment doesn't mean removal and the fact is that you can even you know, Mitch McConnell so let's just say all gets said and done. And they want to go, ah, we're going to impeach the guy and, you know, do the, the, you know, we've been through this. Then McConnell can wait and he could wait and then he could wait it out through his his term as the the president of, uh, you know, I mean, as as the leader in the Senate. And then eventually Schumer could bring it up and they could continue forward or he could bring it up the day before the 19th. And that's the trial. Take some time. The long-term strategy is mm, maybe if we get rid of him, we never have to worry about having him run again, which could be the long-term thinking. I don't know if you have to really worry about that. I think Trump realizes it's over for him. I think Trump realizes it's done. I think Trump realizes that the things he thought he was going to do after he left office and the opportunities had, I think he realizes a lot of those have been squandered away. There is a possibility that after all of this, there's no punishment, no consequence, and he could run again for president. And that's one of the motivations that people have for advocating for impeachment. Won't that take more than the 10 days? I mean, does it actually make sense? There is strong support in the Congress uh, for impeaching the president a second time. This president is guilty of inciting insurrection. Uh, he has to pay a price for that. Pelosi, Leslie Stahl, 60 Minutes. There's a lot that's going to happen as we head into the next president, which is coming. Still, people out there have no idea. I'm sorry. Last week, this is some of the stuff they were chanting. Hang Mike Pence. Hang Mike Pence. Hang Mike Pence. That is absolutely insane. What the hell is wrong with people? People who live in a different world. Somebody asked me what I, I, I'm the saddest of. Of course, obviously, what took place last week was, was awful. You know, to me, one of the saddest things of all of this are people who aren't grounded in reality. That, to me, has been the thing that's been extremely sad. People who aren't grounded in reality. People that I know, that I try to talk to. Who, who just aren't there. They're missing something. I don't know what it is. I don't. And I've also known this about it. They're at the point, too, where there is nothing else in their life. Nothing else matters in their life. Nothing else at all matters in what's going on in the world around them. Their wives, their husbands, their kids, their work. It. This is all that they focus on. This has now become their all-encompassing world. And that's scary. And the hang Mike's Pence thing is awful. But what's even worse? Since that moment when Mike Pence uh, was rushed out of the Senate...
chamber taken to a secure location under attack. Uh, some of those protesters actually chanting, hang Pence, hang Pence. Uh, truly uh, his life in danger during this. The president has not spoken to him, didn't speak to him that day and has not spoken to him since. That is absolutely insane. You know, Mr. President, there was a lot of stuff that that you did that that was that was crap. I didn't agree with. There's a lot of stuff that look. Biden's going to do some stuff that I'm not going to agree with. That I think is that, that is crap. And there was times I defended you because I thought the media over blew things, which they did. In fairness, this right here though shows me everything. And along the way, we've talked about it. You're either for Trump or you're against Trump. That's the way he looks at you. You're for him. Or against him. You're for him. You're on his team. And you need to show loyalty. By the way, he'll show you no loyalty. He'll show you no loyalty. The quicker this gets done, the better. That's the way I feel. There's nine days left. What will they do? Like I say, there is something to an impeachment. guaranteeing he, he can't hold office again. Sadly, the person who's running the executive branch is a deranged, unhinged, dangerous president of the United States. And uh, only a number of days until uh, we can be protected from him. Uh, but he has done something so serious uh, that there should be prosecution against him. I gather that the 25th Amendment is off the table. That isn't. Nothing is off the table. Nothing is off the table. Apparently, Pence is... Not ruled that out. I don't know where the cabinet is on this. My assumption is somebody like Pence wants to get involved in something like this. That yes, maybe that could happen. I'm with Pat Toomey here, Republican senator out of Pennsylvania, along with Murkowski, who came out and spoke on Friday, saying that she thinks he needs to go. Your Republican right. colleague, Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, says President Trump should resign. Do you agree? Yeah, I do. I think at this point, with just a few days left, it's um, the best path forward, the best way to get this person in the rearview mirror uh, for us. Uh, that could happen immediately. I'm not optimistic it will, but uh, I do think that would be the best way forward. I agree. I think it's time. I think the uh, the crap show's over. And this is a you thing. It is. And the sad thing is, is you have a lot of sycophants around you. You have a lot of people that feed you crap. And instead of hearing what you need to hear, you only hear what you want to hear. Because that's what you want them to tell you. And they've agreed to do that. I've said since night one after the, first of all, before the election, I told you guys what was going to happen. I told everybody on my little dog and pony show here that what's going to happen is going to look just like this. Whoever loses is going to complain that it was rigged and it was stolen. And I said, if Trump loses, because you're going to see, he's going to say, oh, there's a red wave at night, and then all of a sudden the tsunami comes along, and by the weekend it was over. Kind of the way it went. Don't you think it was stolen? No, I think we have some serious issues with the way the elections are going and the way that some of this stuff was done. But to think that it was stolen, to think that there was some grand scheme behind it, I never bought into it. I haven't, and I won't. you got to show me proof. You've had more than ample opportunities to try to stop certifications by being in the courtroom and showing these judges, some of which are Republicans, hey, take a look at this. We think you should stop the certification because this deserves a deeper dive. And more often than not, not only did they not claim fraud. They agreed with what the Democrats and the people who were in the courtroom against them said. Yes, we need to make sure our, the integrity of our elections are there. And if people are serious about this, they'll continue to a deeper dive into some of the way that some of these things went down. But to say that hundreds of thousands and millions of votes were switched, all of this stuff is a bunch of crap. It truly is.
and it's dangerous. And the lies last week and the weeks before that that were spreading about, well, Trump has Pence in his back pocket and Pence can change all of this. And so can these Congress and senators. They never could. And people continued to eat it up. There were people inside of there who had zip ties. Why do you have a zip tie? Not just one or two. You had a ton of zip ties. I'm curious. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. Hope you guys had a good weekend. A lot of stuff to get to. We're going to squeeze it in. Including the 50 most commonly misspelled words. Words like accommodate. Accommodate. People don't know how to spell it. How do you spell accommodate? Is there one C's? Is there two C? Is there two M's? I don't know. But these are the 50 most misspelled words. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Plus, we're also going to talk about what's going on in social media, where the real battle should be fought. And by that, I mean the free speech side of things, the things that go too far. We need to have a serious discussion about that, about what's happening with Parler and a lot of other things and why conservatives should be frustrated. Before we do that, though, Raycons, love my earbuds. This weekend, uh, I worked out a lot. Got up yesterday very early and boxed, and it was uh, it was great. Had my Raycons on. Went out and played some golf as well. Had my Raycons on. Uh, six hours of talk time, seamless Bluetooth pairing, better sound quality, better design, and the noise isolating fit sets it all up. It's so incredible. When Ray J put this together, it was about sound quality, but the fit and the comfort level with no stems and no wires just changes the game. Normally, you'd spend two, three hundred dollars for for earbuds anywhere near this. These Raycons start well under a hundred dollars, and I'm going to save you extra. Go to buyraycon.com slash chad. Save an extra 15% right there. Buyraycon.com slash chad for the best earbuds around. Save yourself an extra 15%. Buyraycon.com slash chad. Chad Benson Show. Deep states? Uh, No. Deep doo-doo? Yeah. The Chad Benson Show. Work dragged on until almost 4 a.m. I object. As Republicans challenged certified election results. And they did that after the violence. After the violence. Shame on them. And shame on a, a two-thirds of the Republican caucus in the House supporting those. So these people are enablers of the president's behavior. I remember when Republicans in the Senate went to see Richard Nixon and said, it's over. That's what has to happen now. Yeah. I think the, the, that happens if you get five, six, seven, eight, ten senators, right? So you have two now. Let's just say another five to seven at some point today come out and say that they are going to, uh, if and when it gets to, to that point, they would vote to, to, to remove him. You make that, that walk over. Now, there's, there's another side of this, which is could this incite more violence? There's another side to this is could this cause more issues i think issues are some issues are going to come i do i absolutely think there's going to be some other issues that are going to be coming out of this sooner rather than later and they're bracing for it on you know inauguration day trump says he's not going to the inauguration not a shocker i think anybody's shocked by that and i think that's totally fine I was told the way up here that he indicated he wasn't going to show up at the inauguration. One of the few things he and I have ever agreed on. It's a good thing I'm not showing up. He has clearly exceeded even my worst notions about him. He's been an embarrassment country, embarrassed us around the world, not worthy, not worthy to hold that office. If we were six months out, we should be moving everything to get him out of office, impeaching him again, trying to invoke the 25th Amendment, whatever it took. But I am focused now on the 20th and to get our agenda moving as quickly as we can. And I, I, I said this last week, if this was December 1st, I think there's no doubt the impeachment would come. And I don't know if Mitch McConnell would, would dilly-dally with it. 
I think it would happen. But nine days left. Not sure. But what I do think the Republicans need to do is they need to stand up and be counted in in, in a different way. Not whether I mean, you're, we're, we're going to talk about could some people who thought last week they were raising their profile in a way that was going to make them uh, have a real shot at 2024. Did some of those people not only miscalculate, but could they be in a situation where 2024 ha, not going to happen? Not going to happen. But the Republicans need to figure out exactly what's going to take place from here. Are you the party of Trump or are you the party that stood for certain conservative values? Look, Trump governed, again, the governing side of stuff. Trump did pretty good. I like the I wish he was harder on China. I do. He got us out of wars, didn't get us into any wars. Which was a great thing. Took on immigration, albeit one thing blew up in his face, but the reality is, is that was, you know, I mean, I I didn't agree with that. Regulations, I thought was a great thing. Even some of the tax cuts, not all of them, I thought, yeah, he did some stuff. Three courts, appointees on the Supreme Court, peace in the Middle East. I mean, these are some, these are some real things. But at the end of the day, Nobody's going to care about any of that stuff. This will be the thing they remember. This right here. What about Pence in the inauguration? But what about the vice president, Mike Pence? He's welcome. I think it's important that as much as we can stick to what have been the historical precedents of how and the circumstances in which an administration changes should be maintained. Yeah. Pence is going because he's an adult. That's why Mike Pence is going. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. What is next for Trump? What's next for the Republicans and a few of those, like Ted Cruz, Josh Hawley? Some coronavirus stuff. And Parler getting shut down. Interesting. Good? Bad? We talk about it straight ahead. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Following last week's deadly siege on Capitol Hill and the president's role in it, PGA of America President Jim Richardson says the 2022 PGA Championship will not be held at President Trump's golf club in Bedminster, New Jersey, saying the organization determined that doing so would be detrimental to the PGA of America brand and would put at risk the PGA's ability to deliver on many programs and sustain the longevity of our mission. The Trump organization calls the move a breach of contract, saying the PGA had no right to terminate the deal. Yeah, people are getting away as fast as possible from Trump. Totally understandable. Dude, he's kryptonite right now. Uh, you know, he, he's nuclear. He is, he is, you don't want to be around him. And and I can look, and it sucks because I didn't mind some of the stuff he did. I'm talking about the actual governing. He brought our soldiers home. They crushed the caliphate, said, okay, we're out of here. We don't need to be fighting endless wars. He did some good stuff, but along the way, he was his own worst enemy. And at the end of the day, his words and his tweets and his denial cost him big time. And that right there, the PGA, he loves he loves golf. He owns golf resorts all over. Pulling out of the 2022 PGA Championship, that that eats him up right now. That absolutely eats him up. It does. It does. 
Now, I'm not blaming Trump for everything that took place last week. The reality is he had other sycophants around him, the likes of Rudy Giuliani, combat by trial, trial by combat. You know, I mean, and I'm not even blaming him for the actions, because at the end of the day, people make their own decisions. But he baked the entire cake along the way. They chose to eat it. That's the reality of this. And it's sad. Nobody should be willing to do anything like what we just saw happen on Wednesday on behalf of another human being, period. End of story. I don't care how much you may agree with them or what it is. We're seeing these disturbing quotes in the newspaper from people who are saying, I'm willing to die for Donald Trump. I'm willing to die. Okay, that's not normal. And that's not good. Look, the president does bear some responsibility here that needs to be looked at. We, we have for too long indulged some of these groups as part of the conservative movement. These are not conservatives. These are wackos. These are nut jobs. Yeah, they are. I read several articles this weekend, the things that I've been saying for the last several weeks and months. Which is what we have. Take away politics. It's what we have right now in just about everything. Cancel culture has permeated everything. Somebody takes something you said out of context or tweeted out of context or something you tweeted five, seven, eight, ten years ago that was fine back then, but now today is offending somebody. Then the Twitter mob comes after you. It's the same thing with conservatives and Trump's people, which is simply this. You're either with him or against him. And if you're against him or you don't agree with him wholeheartedly, they'll come for you. And so will he if he has to. Kelly Loeffler, who lost last week in Georgia, was essentially told when he came out to campaign for her, Last week, you go out there and you deny that he won the election and you push that this thing was stolen or I will eviscerate you. On the Senate floor the other day, she was going to challenge the election. Like Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley. And she said, can't do it, won't do it, not going to happen. Not going to happen. I will say this, though. I agree with, like, I agree with Marco Rubio here about the fact that, yeah, are we focusing on something? Yeah, it should be focused on. It should be looked at. should be looked at. I have friends in Europe who over the weekend were tweeting at me, texting me, talking about what in God's name is happening. This is, this, this feels like a, you know, it looked like, a siege of some Eastern European country from certain pictures. 99% of the people that were at that protest did not storm that capital. They have strong feelings about the election. They support the president and they were not a part of it. But there is this element, enough people to create a tremendous amount of damage and put a lot of people in danger. And we should be rejecting that group, not after the fact, but before. Look, this is, this is why we have to watch what we say and who we allow into the movement. Because these are the people that can do terrible things. They may be incited to do things by words that maybe you didn't intend to be read that way, but they did. And that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what you meant. It matters what they thought you meant. Yeah. Then I agree with them wholeheartedly. 100%. You have too many people who, uh, and like I said last week, some of the biggest disappointment in all of this, besides what took place, five people dying, now another officer's, you know, uh, committed suicide why i don't know will there be more to it people read into it that's the thing he could be going through a divorce he could be losing everything he could all of those things and people say well it's because uh you know because uh he knew he knew something but five people died five people died these people did something because some of them are Everything Trump says, this was never about the election. This was about Trump's election. It was never about elections long term. It's about Trump's election and Trump himself. What would you say to Donald Trump if you were talking to him right now? I'd say you're the greatest president of our lifetime. And I'm 65 and I've seen a lot going on that is so false and fraudulent. It sickens me and I will die 
standing in my boots as a patriot for this country. If this goes wrong, it's not going to be good. Yeah. That's scary. It is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's. It's crazy. It is. It's crazy. It, it is. With all that going on, Trump got permanently banned from Twitter, and Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. I mean, anything else outside of, you know, and then you've got, <laughs> is Friendster still around? Is he on MySpace? I don't even know. But these are things that are real that we have to talk about. I get it with what people are pissed about when it comes to, on the right, the way that big tech goes about things. Absolutely, 110%. We should be upset. Big tech leans left. That's not... They they're ta- They know they lean left, and they're fine with that. It is a private company, 100%. They can do whatever they want. My buddy, uh, Bruce St. James, morning show out there in Chicago, WS, uh, w, WLS, <laughs> said it's a private company. If they want to ban redheads, they can ban redheads. Very true. It's like I say with, uh, you know, the mask thing. It's a private company. Like somewhere like Costco. If they want you to wear top hat and tails to get in, you got to wear top hat and tails. But the frustration is, is the left dominates that area. And because of that, people look at the sounding boards that they have and they feel that, hey, everybody should be able to have their free speech. I agree. Now, inciting violence, threatening violence, Some of these things, it's, you know, people are, it it feels willy-nilly. And there's the problem with it. There's a huge problem with that. So over the weekend, starting Friday, basically everybody who is anybody in the industry, from Apple to Google to, to everybody in between, is essentially dumping Parler, which is the right leaning Twitter, which really it was supposed to be the free speech Twitter. Parler has zero moderation. The whole point is that this is a completely free community that you can say what you want. What it tends to have done is attracted very hard right conservatives, conspiracy theorists, racists. It's garbage. I mean, the stuff on Parler is remarkable garbage. There's some space for real conversation. But the hashtags are anti-Semitic. They're racist. They are anti-black. There's a lot of MAGA 2020. There's a lot of Stop the Steal, which is uh, the movement that was involved in promoting what happened at the Capitol on Wednesday. Look, I, I had a parlor account. I tweeted, I parlored twice. I said, happy Monday, both times. I didn't know what it was about. I figured, you know what? You go over and you see. It's it's a lot of that. Is that everything? No. But it is a lot of that. And there's some scary people out there. But then you run to the question of your First Amendment. Is it censorship? Even the New York Times is asking serious questions about two billionaires shutting down another billionaire. People are frustrated. Is this censorship? Is it the right thing? No, I don't think it is, and I'll tell you why. Yes, you can't have people advocating for violence. That thing you shut down, we know that. We've talked about it over time. There's certain things you can't yell fire in, 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 you know, in, a, in a movie theater, a crowd movie theater. But when you start to send people down their own echo chambers, that's not good. It isn't. It isn't good. You know, earlier last year, YouTube decided to say, all right, if you're a flat earther, you can't post stuff on here. And I'm thinking to myself, of all the things, right? Like, of all the things. But it was a bit of a, hey, you know what? We'll, 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 send, this, we'll send this canary down the coal mine to see if, how things are going here. Let's just see what takes place here. Well, nobody cares about flat earthers wasn't about that that's a belief that you have you're a flat earther that is your belief we can call you crazy and call you kooks whatever you want to call them but at the end of the day who does who did, who did that really hurt and if i'm an adult and i want to choose to believe in flat earth i should be able to do that I should make a a a 
actual judgment upon myself to say, I believe this or don't believe this, but I will look it up and I'm okay. I can decipher between what I think is BS or not. But it felt like just a test to see. And it's scary. And there is a censorship issue. And he is our president. He is. But they made the decision. And this is the problem that the right has and the conservatives have. Because they feel like everybody's lumped in the one. You take the extremist, that's who is on there. Marco Rubio said it. I said it last week. You have 25, 30,000 people at that Stop the Steal rally. Out of that, 28,000 or 27,000 head back to their hotels or their flights to somewhere else. And then you got 3,000 that head over there. And out of that 3,000, 700 or so are a bunch of knuckleheads who are vile. That's not everybody. Just like not everybody in the left is a communist or a socialist. But that's what we do. We take the extremes and we say, well, if those are the extremes, this must mean it's everybody. And it's not. But there are real questions here about freedom of speech. And yes, it is a private company. But when everything is dominated, like Apple, totally left. Google, totally left. You start going down the line. So if you can't even put your stuff out there, that's the scary part. And remember, they come for one now. And then another one, but could it be you? It could be anybody. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Shows, your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from each and every one of you. AMAC, Association of Mature American Citizens, has amazing, incredible deals for you. Retail, restaurant, hotel discounts. Discounts across the board for things like movies. And when we're out there and ready to, to get out there again and start living our lives in a normalish capacity, you take advantage of all those. On top of that, fighting on your behalf for things like Social Security form and, 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 and Medicare, making sure all of those things are there and solvent. One of the great things they do is let's say you join and it's pennies a day. It's like 19 bucks to join. So you join and you need help with Social Security. What do I do? Do I fill this out? How do I do this? You call them up. They'll take care of it for you. Walk you through every step. Same thing with Medicare. It is truly a great benefit. Check it out for yourself. Again, fastest growing over 50 organization in the country. Go to amac.us forward slash chad. amac.us forward slash chad. Pennies a day. Benefits are great. amac.us forward slash chad. It's the Chad Benson Show. Running with scissors sounds great compared to this. Say woo! Takes a snap. That's going to do it from Pittsburgh, from Heinz Field. Sit back and watch and listen to this one inside a half minute, and the Browns will not have to snap the ball again. They will beat the Steelers in the opening round of the playoffs on a wonderful, wonderful wild card weekend. They knock off the Steelers 48 37. Kansas City, here we come. Wow. I watched every game over the weekend. Buffalo looks really good. Hell of a game. Ravens, great game. Looking good. Rams, that defense is Super Bowl worthy. But who's going to be their quarterback? That's the big question. Goff's got a dislocated finger. He had surgery. They put twelve or uh, they put a bunch of pins in there. It was twelve days after his surgery that he had to come in and play this past weekend because the guy that was his backup that played the week before to help him get into the playoffs, in like the through three minutes into the game, he he got just thumped and had to go to the hospital. He's fine. And now you've got the Browns and the Saints winners. The Buccaneers easily got by Washington. Uh, well, you know, I shouldn't say easily. It was a hell of a game. I don't know if you guys saw the picture. If you guys have not seen the picture, go 
so over the weekend, uh, the <laughs> the legend of Tom Brady grew. But one of the things it did, which was hilarious, is they showed a picture of George Blanda, who was, until that day, the oldest quarterback to play in a playoff game. And they put it side by side with Tom Brady. And I got to be completely honest with you, George Blanda looks 70 years old. Tom Brady still looks about 35. <laughs> it was just a fun weekend. And, and here's the thing. I watched a bit of the game on Nickelodeon. So yesterday, the Saints-Bears game, which wasn't a great game, was on Nickelodeon. So they had uh, former NFL players, a Nickelodeon host, and Noah uh, Eagle, uh, who's a great announcer, a young kid, well, like 25. His first job out of you know college was like an NBA announcer. And every time they kick a field goal or an extra point, you kick it through SpongeBob. If you scored a touchdown, you were getting slimed. It was hilarious. And fun to watch. Good weekend of games. Next weekend's going to be awesome, too. I can't wait. And how about those Browns? 18 years was worth the wait. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. We're coming for you, and we're going to have a good time doing it. Let's have trial by combat. You'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength. We're going to walk down and I'll be there with you to the Capitol. In two hours, this woman will be dead. We are now walking down the inaugural path to the Capitol building. Oh, there we go. The U.S. Capitol has been breached. I call on President Trump to go on national television now and demand an end to this siege. We love you. You're very special. Our incredible journey is only just beginning. Chaos, craziness last week, and here we are. Peach part two. I, you know, at this point, what do you say? Somebody asked me, do you think I, that he should impeach, be impeached? I said, uh, I think last week was definitely something impeachable, but is the timing right? But that we got nine days left. From all accounts and everything I've heard from my sources, he's not even coming to any meetings. It's Mike Pence and the cabinet. That's it. Mike Pence has essentially assumed control. And I'm okay with that. Should he resign? I think he should resign. I think that's the best thing to do if I'm him. I would resign. That is the best thing that he should. How how dare you say? Absolutely he should. Period. Case closed. End of story. He should step away. Try to calm things down and step away. Will this get to the point where we're going to have a Senate trial? That's the question that's going to be out there. I say impeachment would be, to me, if this was December 1st, there's no doubt on my mind he would be getting impeached. And the reality is there's probably enough Republicans to go along with it to remove him from office. Pat Toomey, GOP senator. Yesterday, on with Jake Tapper. Your Republican right. colleague, Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, says President Trump should resign. Do you agree? Yeah, I do. I think at this point, with just a few days left, it's um, the best path forward, the best way to get this 
person in the rearview mirror uh, for us. Uh, that could happen immediately. I'm not optimistic it will, but uh, I do think that would be the best way forward. Yeah. To me, resigning. Pence apparently is not taking the 25th Amendment off the table. Nancy Pelosi last night on 60 Minutes with Leslie Stahl. I can't stand Nancy Pelosi's politics. And the reality is I, I don't think she's as upstanding as some people on the left would like, but it's about the left. She's the left. So they, so they give her a lot of a lot of wiggle room in the world. Here's the thing. She has been around way too long. She's enriched herself, as have many of these politicians. And her enriching isn't just about money. It's about power. But at the end of the day, she's right about a lot of this stuff when it comes to Trump at this moment. Sadly, the person who's running the executive branch is a deranged, unhinged, dangerous president of the United States. And only a number of days until we can be protected from him. Uh, But he has done something so serious uh, that there should be prosecution against him. I gather that the 25th Amendment is off the table. That isn't. Nothing is off the table. And that's what I think they're imploring to Mike Pence. Now, in saying that, Democrats, we have nine days. He no longer has Twitter. There, it, it, the way for him to even reach his people, and I will say Twitter made President Trump. He has said it. I have said it, and I'll say it again and again. There is no President Trump without Twitter. There is no President Trump without social media and the way he used it. Not even close. There is no President Trump. He reached the people in ways that really, when you think about the way that he spoke, he went around mainstream media, the establishment media, even media that was for him. He went around and he spoke directly to them. But it also got him in tons of trouble. Go back the last five years. When you heard people talk about President Trump, What do they always say? Oh, I like a lot of what he's doing. I wish he would tweet less. I like a lot of what he was doing. I wish they would take his Twitter away from him. That what we got him in the office also caused him a lot of self-inflicted problems. This wasn't about that, though. Last week, this was about the continual lie. that he has perpetuated along with several others, that this thing was stolen from him. It wasn't stolen. But, Chad, did you see all of the people at those rallies? Yeah. I sure did. It was a lot of people. Trump has a fervent amount of people that support him. Oh, he's got 75 million. You know what? I- I'm going to say this right now. There's a lot of people out there that held their nose and voted for Trump. Couldn't stand the man, liked his policies. That's the reality of it. It's not 75 million willing to die for Trump. It's not. But they caused hell and havoc last week. And for that, people are asking for the last days of his presidency to be surrendered. He did this to himself perpetuated lie over and over again and people bought into it aren't you worrying about i worry about all elections we should make sure that we have integrity in our elections that our elections are as secure as they possibly can be no matter what side of the aisle you're on you have to admit at some point in time you got to realize that yeah some some stuff goes on some funny stuff and both sides have had issues mostly in smaller races Both sides have. So let's not pretend that it's just one side or another. The thing that makes me laugh is all the people who say that the the Democrats and wanted to steal this and and the Republicans would never do that. Did you see them storm last week? Did you see them set siege upon our Capitol? You don't think people would be willing to do anything? Nothing happened the way that they think it happened. And they continually tell people that it was stolen, and to buy into it, that's the problem. 
That's the problem. These conspiracy theories, these this wackiness, this lunacy. No. And now it has cost him his legacy. We can look back and check boxes that are like three. That, here, take this away and take the tweeting away. And if I was to tell you this president got three Supreme Court justices. He got a vaccine for a pandemic in less than a year that he helped spearhead. Peace in the Middle East brought our troops home, lowered taxes, crushed the caliphate, record high in the stock market. You would have been like, wow. That's took on immigration, albeit some mistakes along the way, social justice reform, you'd be like, oh, my God. The rhetoric cost him. And it cost him big time. First man to be impeached twice. And remember, one of the things about Impeachment, if it goes on after, which it would, is the fact that they can do something that would guarantee something. The critical reason why one would continue with an impeachment and conviction after an official leaves office is not to remove them, but to do the second thing that impeachment enables in conviction, and that is to bar them from ever holding public office again. The question is, though, if you're the Democrats, do you go down this path for real? It's not healing a country. It's not. But do you go down the path for real? You've already got uh, uh, you know assurances from the you know uh, Joint Chiefs and and everybody else that he's not going to be not launching nuclear weapons or any of these crazy things. But removing him could cost more lives and damage at this moment. And if you're really concerned about healing, then maybe it's best to just allow Pence to run everything for the next several days in his last full week as president, and we move on. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show, your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from all of you. Car Shield is great. I love it. I have my... Car Shield on all of my cars, and it is fantastic. It's just if you're if you're worried about that check engine light, and you know what that thing could cost, especially today with all the things that we're going through, how many people have thousands of extra dollars to spare? Probably not a ton. So what do you do? You protect yourself. Well, the car's got five thousand or hundred fifty thousand miles on. Pick yourself up, Car Shield. They got plans start as low as ninety nine dollars a month. It's the greatest way to protect your car. On top of that, you get choices. Unlike a lot of these other places, you have choice of your mechanic. What? Yeah, you get twenty four seven roadside assistance. And on top of that, they get them paid directly. You pay a small deductible. It is that simple. It truly is. Don't waste your time with anything else. Protect yourself with Car Shield. Go to carshield.com. Check it out for yourself. It's truly amazing, the work that they're doing. And I tell you what, I I, I don't say this lightly. Having the opportunity to get a rental car if your car's in the shop is amazing. Use code Benson to save 10%. Carshield.com. Carshield.com. Use code Benson. Save yourself 10%. A deductible may apply. Chad Benson Show. Welcome to Chad. Chad. No, not the country. The institution. The Chad Benson Show. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Let's see what's trending. Around the globe, as well as here in these United States of America. These United States of America. Martin Luther King Jr. Day is trending. 
That's next Monday. But trending now, people trending, hey, do I have to go to work next Monday? Martial law trended big time over the last uh, uh, 24 hours with what's going down in England. The lockdown is getting harder and harder. Justin Thomas, who we'll talk about, golfer, not just a golfer, probably one of the top three golfers in the world, said something and has apologized. We'll touch on that as well a little bit later. Tiger Woods, speaking of golf, has got uh, HBO documentary. Very interesting. Very interesting. A deeper look into who Tiger is. A little bit more access to, you know, somebody who's been, think about this, since he was three, he has been a prodigy. He was on That's Incredible, I think when he was three years old. I grew up right next to Tiger. I see Tiger all the time. And we would go hit golf balls at night. He's like eight, nine, ten years old. And my buddies and I would go, we we go play soccer, we go play hit golf balls at night at this place called Hartwell, and it was it had lit range, also had lit nine, you know, eighteen holes. Uh and it was amazing. He's like eight, nine years old, and there he is with his dad at like nine thirty, ten o'clock at night, hitting golf balls. We're like, hey, it's a that's incredible kid. Head on over to Google. Cleveland Browns. People are still stunned by their victory yesterday. PGA Championships pulled out the 2022 championship from the Trump National Golf Club, Bedminster. Because of what took place. Bill Belichick, according to Politico, President Trump plans to award New England Patriots uh, head coach the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And Parler goes offline completely following the suspension by Amazon, Apple, and Google. It's been shut down. And that's a, I'm telling you, that's that's a scary thing. It is a scary, scary thing that the battle, and I keep saying, you want to talk about where the battle should be, where people should be focusing. First of all, chaos and craziness last week is insane. We need none of that. That is vile. That is un-American. We need none of that. The battle on the cultural side of things is where we need to have discussions. That's where things are happening. The cancel culture, the ridiculousness of, of, of trying to control people's language. Now, I've said this once and I'll say it again. They're a private company. They can do as they want to do. Google and Apple and everybody else. They have Every right to do what they're doing because it's their company doesn't make it right. And we do have to start asking the question about censorship across the board. The the rallying cry here is First Amendment and censorship. The parlor folks are saying social media tech giants are censoring free speech and they're uniquely censoring conservatives come to parlor. And this is a free space for you to, to, to have a conversation. And yes, there are people across the political spectrum. It's not all garbage. It's just a lot of garbage uh, on parlor at the moment. It's not like Twitter where you were getting into uh, intellectual debates with people who didn't share your views with a side dish of garbage. Sometimes parlor is mostly uh, the crazy stuff i don't want to say i I agree that there's there was a lot of garbage there for sure uh and let's settle down Allie belshi right there about whether or not you know we're having really honest good debates i've seen some of those but most of them devolve into insanity no matter where we are at this point whether it's facebook or instagram or or twitter at, at times they can devolve into to insanity But there is a fair question to ask, especially the way that conservatives feel that their voice isn't being heard and they're being unfairly targeted over and over again on social media. I'm about as independent as it gets on the radio, period, case closed, end of story. The reality is, though, they've come after me at times, even for stuff that's true. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Hey, it's a new... Independent thoughts, independent life. 
This is Chad Benson. Hope that the Republican Party, as they're moving away from this fellow who's no longer the president, I hope they would not let him back into the camp so he could demonstrate or say that, oh, I'm still here. I'm going to do it all. No, you're not. You're out. And act like you're out. Go to Florida. Go to wherever else you want to go. And what we have to do is persuade Mr. Trump and those who have followed him all these years that you need to take another look. You need to really start working in terms of what's best for our country, not what's best for Mr. Trump. And that's a big thing. That right there, Colin Powell, and he's right. And I think the I think that the Republicans have a question that not only does the party need to ask, but also the people who support the Republican Party and each individual representative. Is this a party of Trump? Or Are we going to go back to what we've always campaigned on? Lower government, I mean, uh, lower taxes, less government, more accountability, freedoms, liberty, things of those nature. Is, 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 you've got to make the choice. You, you have to, if you're the Republicans right now. I think a lot of Republicans were worried. The ones I talked to who were just, I got several friends that I refuse to bring on air because I criticize them as well, and they know that, and I, but who are part of the Republican Party, congressmen and senators. Same thing goes for, I have several Democrats who are, who are my friends, you know, but we chat and text back and forth and and. They've all been asking the same question. What do the Republicans believe? Where are they going to go? What's it look like? This just wasn't a last week thing. Know that. This wasn't just, oh, this happened last week, so look at it now. This was and has been brewing for a few years. That's why you got the Lincoln Project. Right? The Lincoln Project is a bunch of conservatives who were essentially never Trumpers. You had a lot of never Trumpers in the Republican Party. Some of them were extremely vocal. A lot of them kept their mouth shut out of fear. Fear for the angry mob. Fear for the insanity. Fear for the chaos and craziness. And I think a lot of them thought Trump leaving as a sympathetic figure could give him the opportunity to be a kingmaker in the Republican Party and to control the narrative there. But after last week, I do believe that ship has sailed. So the Republicans have to ask themselves, where do they go from here? Uh, And this is the time for us to move away and get back to being good Republicans, but more importantly, just good Republicans, good citizens that work with other citizens of other ambitions. But let's argue it out the way we're supposed to argue it out, the way it's been done all these years, and not have somebody who can actually stand up and claim that the election was a disaster and it was a lie. It wasn't a lie. It was God-honest truth. Can Biden do it? Can Biden unite the country? My thought process with Biden has been, and we've shared it on the show many times. If you're new to the show, thanks so much for giving us a chance. We do things a lot differently here. I care about truth. I care about facts over feelings. We try not to get too too emotional about stuff, and we're not good at spelling. You know that. But can he unite the country? And my thought process has always been Biden will bore us to death. Biden will bore us. There won't be a lot going on. There's not going to be tweeting every 10 minutes. There's not going to be picking fights. There's not going to be chaos and craziness. It'll just be kind of... eh. And you take away the TMZ-like feel that we've had when it comes to so many things with Trump. And I'm not talking about policies. I'm talking about other things. It's kind of very bland. It's very beige. It's 
It's very beige. Biden is one of those homes that you see built that are like those, those you know, four-bedroom, two-bath homes that are stucco and they all look the same in the street. And Trump was kind of like the Winchester Mystery Mansion, where you got, you know, under M.C. Escher was the architect of it. Stairs to nowhere. All ca- it's crazy. It's, uh, it's lunacy. It's all over the place. I don't know if I want to live there. Biden's stucco, beige. Trump wasn't. The Republicans have to figure out what they're going to do moving forward. They do. And last week, you saw Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley and several others who were trying to up, I think, their run for 2024, up their profile. And in doing so, I think they not only hurt themselves, yes, they hurt the Republican Party, but they hurt their their brand and their opportunity, I think. I think a lot of people out there, a lot of Republicans... I've talked to out here. Paul Gosar was the one who started everything last week and then threw it to Ted Cruz in the Senate. People around here I know who are Republicans who have supported him in the past is I will not forgive him for that. You try to nullify voices. You try to take away people's voice. We'll see. Going to be very interesting. They've got a decision to make. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show's your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. All that being said, we're in the midst of something still. And it's called the coronavirus. And it is still here. And we've got a vaccine. How's that rolling out? The CDC says of the 22 million distributed so far, fewer than 7 million shots have been administered. I think what we're finding is if you spend too much time worrying about tiering, it becomes a problem. Um, You know, if you don't have enough demand in your tier A, then you go to tier B, then you go to tier C, and you just got to get those vaccines into arms now. President-elect Biden says he'll release nearly all available vaccine doses instead of saving some for second shots. You know, the whole chaos of of the vaccine rollout has been a just a and i can't just blame it all on the feds because everybody is culpable in this here here in arizona the dashboard to find out what group you're supposed to be in is i pretty handy on a computer pretty handy i'm not an idiot it's confusing as hell We've opened up the uh, State Farm Arena, which is where the Cardinals play. And they're going to have a 24-hour, you know, place where you can go get the vaccine administered. It's it's just the entire thing has been a joke in the way that we've rolled this out. And then on top of that, you got a lot of people who aren't going to take it. Not at first. They're skeptical. Skeptical of the science. Skeptical of how quick it took. Some people think that, you know, it's going to change your DNA. Other people think it's going to, you know, I mean, there's all the stuff that goes into it. But we've got, you know, this thing isn't going as smooth as they thought. And that's Biden's first agenda. You want to get the country back on its feet. Let's get control of this one way or another. People want to get back to work. People want to open their businesses again. People don't want a handout. They want you to get out of their way. That's what they want. We're going to give everybody $2,000. How about you give everybody the opportunity to get back to work and live their lives? We need to get this thing under control. That's the reality of it. We could have 100 million shots right now, and I don't think we'd have too much difference as far as how many people have taken it. I just don't. It just seems to be, like everything else, a giant in the way that this thing has gone. It's like, who's running this stuff? Who is? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from you. So we can't spell. That's the real. I can't. I, I'm awful at spelling. I'm completely awful. 
Completely awful. It's been. We have Kimmy. Kimmy uh, is in for Phil for the next week. Kimmy, Phil's been exposed. Our other glorious producer has been exposed to the coronavirus, so he's on restriction. So Kimmy's in for us. Kimmy, you are, we, we just assume that females are better spellers than men. We assume. We assume. So I'm going to hit you with a few words. Let's see if you can spell. Are you oh, ready? No. <laughs> okay. Here we go. These are 50 of the most misspelled words. Apparently. 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 A. I, now I'm like going to second guess everything. A P P. Apparently. A P P A R E N T L Y. Boom! You got that right. Hell yeah. Oh, People so misspell right. that a lot. Apparently, they use an A instead of an E more often than not, which I, I find that. to be weird. Basically. Basically, B A S I C A L L Y. Boom. A lot of people leave out an L. Hmm. That would just look funky. It, right? It is. It would look funky. But have you ever done that? You ever spelt something? <laughs> yes. And then you look down and you go, I don't, that, I feel like that's wrong. And then no, that's right. But like in your mind, you're like, no, that's got to be wrong. It looks wrong. And it's it looks sad when it's just wrong. like a basic word, too. Yeah. But we do that in our mind. Here's a tough one. Are you ready? Ready. Are you ready? Uh, All right. So I'm ready. Okay. Dilemma. Dilemma. Oh, crap. D E L I M. Oh. No. D E L I M M A? I think I did that wrong. D I L E M M A. Yep. No. A lot of people wrong. throw an N in there. What? Yeah. Dilemma. They think Dilemma. Dilemma. We'll have more of these because, yeah, I'm awful at spelling. I, I don't even think it's it, like it's not even close to how bad of a speller I am. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter tweet at us text the program my pillow m y p i l l o w uh, dot com go there is incredible. So the thing that started it all was the my pillow, right? Like that was the thing that started it. Now they're giving people to get yourself a my pillow. In a way that's just incredible. Normally, my pillow costs you sixty nine ninety eight. Now you're gonna save forty bucks on that. Forty bucks on your my pillow. Better night's sleep, absolutely. Comfortable. You can add as much fill in it as you want or not. It's just it's never gonna shrink. It's never gonna. It's just amazing. So what are you waiting for? Grab yourself your my pillow right now. Go to MyPillow.com, see all the amazing things that they have on really deep discounts at this moment. Mattress toppers, the Giza Dream Sheets. But save big, like $40 on your MyPillow instead of $69.98, $29.98. It's MyPillow.com. The promo code is Benson. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson to save. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. Darn, that climate change. Batten down the hatches. It's Topical Storm Chad, headed your way. Here is the guest host of Jeopardy, Ken Jennings. Jeopardy's all-time winningest contestant begins his guest hosting stint on the show Monday, while producers continue to seek a permanent replacement for longtime host Alex Trebek, who died of pancreatic cancer in November. Producers just released a first-look promo of Jennings taking the stage in his new role. Sharing the stage with Alex Trebek was one of the greatest honors of my life. Like all Jeopardy fans, I miss Alex. Trebek's last recorded episode aired Friday. Yeah, can't wait to see what those numbers look like. They were huge last week, running up until the last show. And I'm sure the last show was huge, by the way. The last question? Dr. Margaret Todd gave science this word for different forms of one basic substance. It's from the Greek for equal and the place. You have 30 seconds. Good luck. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for spending the time with us. We'll see you again next week. And that was it. 
So Ken Jennings, and of course they tried to cancel him last week. That goes back to what we've been talking about, the cancel culture stuff. Uh, we had tweets from seven years ago or eight years ago when he said something that was was mean, or or the guy he does his podcast with, he's he he made his daughter try to open up a can of beans, and he said no, and and he's it, it's it's nuts, right? So they wanted to be canceled for that. We'll see. We'll see who it's going to be. Will they go with somebody like Ken Jennings? Will they kind of keep it within the family? Because those people, you know, you've got James Holzhauer and a few others that have been kind of stars on that to the point where they have that's what they do now. They're celebrity guest hosts or on other shows. It's possible. It's possible. Or will they go outside and get somebody else? Don't know. Don't know. We'll see. We shall see. Will it be a woman? It's possible. Will it be a comedian? It's possible. Maybe a robot. Hurt nobody's feelings. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Shows, your Twitter. Watch golf over the weekend as well. It's just a hell of a weekend of sports. And Century Tournament of Champions. I like this golfer a lot. I was telling them off the air. He uttered something stupid on his third round, and they called him on it immediately after his round. Justin Thomas is his name. Jimmy, during Justin's third round today, he missed a putt and unfortunately made a homophobic slur that our microphones picked up. And Justin is joining us now. How would you explain what happened on the golf course today, Justin? Uh, it's it's inexcusable. I, I first off, I just apologize. I mean, um, there, there's no excuse. I'm I'm an adult. I'm a grown man. There's absolutely no reason for me to say anything like that. Um, it's uh, it's terrible. I mean, I, I'm extremely embarrassed. It's not who I am. It's not kind of person um that i am or anything that i uh i do but it's uh unfortunately i did it and i have to own up to it and i uh, i'm very apologetic we learned yeah do i think he's sorry i do sports golf in particular but sports people say things in the in in, in the height of something in the height of a battle and they say things that are stupid he didn't call somebody that he called himself that and yes we know the word Think British cigarette. Was it wrong? Of course it was. But I was telling them, he's got a short fuse. All the time. You know, in the 70s and 80s, there was a guy named Craig Stadler. Used to call him the walrus. And for a few years, they used to have microphones on the, you know, down there. And they, for for a decade, they didn't anymore because of Craig. Stadler would just, he would break stuff and drop F-bombs. He's like this, especially with no crowds around right now. You can hear everything. I said earlier in that day, I thought he was going to snap his clubs in half. He had a ball out of bounds, had to go back up and and tee off again. I thought he was going to break his clubs in half. It's unacceptable. Now the interesting thing is what does the PGA do in this woke world? What do his sponsors do in this woke world? Is apology enough anymore? Or is there no room for forgiveness? We'll see. 323-538-2423 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Shows your Twitter, your Instagram. Check out Chad Benson Show TV on YouTube and check out Facebook as well. It's the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. And we need to march on the Capitol today. We are going to take our country back. We're coming for you, and we're going to have a good time doing it. Let's have trial by combat. You'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength. We're going to walk down, and I'll be there with you to the Capitol. In two hours, this woman will be dead. We are now walking down the inaugural path to the Capitol building. Oh, there we go. The U.S. Capitol has been breached. I call on President Trump to go on national television now and demand an end to this siege. We love you. You're very special. Our incredible journey 
is only just beginning. Chad. Some of the sounds from last week. The sounds of impeachment number two. And now what? Should they or shouldn't they? Well, they're going to, but they are. And what does that mean, though? Should they? That's the big question. Should they? If this is December 1st, I don't think you have a choice. We're nine days away from a new president. We're nine days away from moving on from this. We're nine days away from that. Now, some people are saying the reason is pretty simple. Do this now so he can't do it again. The critical reason why one would continue with an impeachment and conviction after an official leaves office is not to remove them, but to do the second thing that impeachment enables in conviction, and that is to bar them from ever holding public office again. I don't really think you have to worry about that. But do we need it? Like I said, December 1st, I I could absolutely see that. December 1st, I could see them doing something like this, and I could see a lot of Republicans getting behind this. Nine days away, and just because you get it done doesn't mean that that Mitch McConnell is going to take it up in any real time. I think Trump's at the point now where he is simply isolated. People I talk to say that Mike Pence is kind of running everything. The meetings, all run by Mike Pence. And if I'm Mike Pence, I want nothing to do with Trump anymore. If I'm Mike Pence, I want absolutely nothing to do with Donald Trump. This... You know, so you impeached him on insurrection, incitement of insurrection. And like I said, the long game may be to make sure that he never holds office again. I don't know if you're the Democrat. Look, I understand two things. You, you, you never want him again. The Republicans I've talked to. Not the Matt Getzes of the world. By the way, I've got some great stories about Matt Getz, uh, you know, and the Andy Biggs, who I know. Very nice guy outside of this. Somewhere along the line, he is he has lost his way. Uh, but several Republicans I have talked to said this isn't any way to heal the country. But they've gone forward and they've introduced him and they're doing it. And so so there you go. Does it unite? Well, if your goal is to make sure that he never ever holds office again, I I, I think the reality is that's probably there. It doesn't help. And the question is, does he deserve punishment? Does he deserve to pay a price for what took place last week? Is he culpable? Not in the actions, but the words that led up to the actions. The actions themselves, those people are culpable. Those people who committed those crimes are absolutely responsible for for their actions. But did Trump bake that cake for them? There is a possibility that after all of this, there's no punishment, no consequence, and he could run again for president. And that's one of the motivations that people have for advocating for impeachment. Won't that take more than the 10 days? And does it actually make sense? There is strong support in the Congress Uh, for impeaching the president a second time. This president is guilty of inciting insurrection. He has to pay a price for that. So, you know, today, Republicans, of course, are going to object. Is there, you know, uh, and the thought process is full House vote later on this week, but it's either this or Pence invokes the 25th. That's what they're doing. It's either this or that. You take this or you take that. Those are your choices. We're going to give you other choices. Hey, if I am Mike Pence, and he said everything is on the table, 
And I do not blame Mike Pence. I do not blame Mike Pence at all. What took place last week is beyond unacceptable. But the fact that not only did that take place, you could care less about me and my well-being, and I'm supposed to be your right-hand man. Since that moment when Mike Pence uh, was rushed out of the Senate chamber, taken to a secure location under attack, uh, some of those protesters actually chanting, hang Pence, uh, truly uh, his life in danger during this, the president has not spoken to him, didn't speak to him that day, and has not spoken to him since. So there you go. So now the ball is in Pence's court. Is the 25th there? Of course, everything, as Nancy says, is on the table. Sadly, the person who's running the executive branch is a deranged, unhinged, dangerous president of the United States. And only a number of days until we can be protected from him. Uh, But he has done something so serious uh, that there should be prosecution against him. I gather that the 25th Amendment is off the table. That isn't. Nothing is off the table. So we'll see. We'll see what they do. We'll see what Mike Pence does. Does Mike Pence, has he taken the temperature in the room? And so many Republicans are terrified. Terrified. Some Republicans have been honest over the last several days to say one of the reasons that they went along with a lot of this stuff is the fear of the backlash. And we see that now with the woke culture, right? They kind of run hand in hand. If you don't pretend to be woke in certain areas... The woke people will come for you, even though you may not believe 99% of the stuff that they do. But the fear is, if I don't go along with it, I'll pay the price. On the other side, I think it's the same thing. And by the way, both of these these loud voices are smaller than you realize. But because we live in a world where the flea wags, the tail wags, the dog, that's the scary part of what's happening. 323-538-2423, 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program, still dealing with the coronavirus, still dealing with the fact that we haven't got... Uh, my thought process, the way it was being pitched to us, right, was, hey, by by March, you know, February, March, we should have 50 million people who, who've been close to being vaccinated. We're like 6.6 million people to being vaccinated. We're nowhere near getting us into a situation where certain states can reopen from their absolutely ridiculous overreach by their local governments. And I know people say, well, the Constitution, if you talk to legal scholars and experts and lawyers, the Constitution is very vague about this. They give the health side of things a little bit more play than you might think. But because of the insanity of all this, we're in a situation where our economy is sluggish and is in a holding pattern as we speak. And we're looking around wondering what's next for this thing. Well, we've got a vaccine and a vaccine, quite frankly, that a lot of people may not be thrilled in taking. Even if it's offered up. And some of these vaccines are just sitting there. They better figure it out sooner rather than later because they're going to waste. And the states, along with the feds and everywhere else, they just seem to be falling flat on what they're supposed to do. And this needs to be Biden's number one thing. Because once you start putting people back to work by allowing them to go back to work because you got a handle on this and you can get some of these states to get out of their way and allow people to do what they want to do. They don't want a handout. They want to work. Once you start doing that, you find out that things start to right the ship, people feel better. I think that's one of the things that's going to take away a bit of this tension. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show, is your Twitter tweet, text. Check out Chad Benson Show TV on YouTube and Facebook as well. Are you ready for it? You know what it is. Home title Scams, right? People who go and they steal the title to your house. You don't even know about it. They then do what? Take out 
equity against the home. You know nothing about it until it's too late. Oh, easier to steal than a car. Most of this done in other parts of the world, and now they're starting to get even easier with it by stealing your house and holding it for ransom, wanting Bitcoin and things like that. What are you doing to protect yourself? Legal titles. Everything's kept online. Scammers, easy to do. Forge your house. And by the way, by forging your signature, they can take it. And in many cases, when you go to court, you're done. They can't do anything. Sorry. So what do you do? Well, you protect yourself. And you do it simple with home title lock. They're going to help you out in more ways than you know. And it's incredible what they're able to do. They're going to protect you. Somebody tries to do something, you're going to be alerted immediately. Put a lockdown on that. Make sure that everything's good. And if somebody happens to get by, they're going to protect you on that side as well, making sure you have representation. Protect your home now with Home Title Lock. Go to HomeTitleLock.com. Register your address to see if you're already a victim. Use code RADIO, 30 days free protection to help you through this crisis. That's code RADIO at HomeTitleLock.com. HomeTitleLock.com. Code RADIO. Chad Benson Show. To be free. I am not a terrorist. I am not Antifa. I am not a sex slave that wears masks. <gasps> Don't be a cutie pie. Probably sit around and cook some soups and eat bread and desserts and just get all fat and sassy. You're ruining my life, bud! Yeah, you are You're listening to the Chad Benson Show. Two of the absolute greatest, who also just happen to be two of the absolute oldest, are about to go at it. With wins by both Drew Brees and Tom Brady over the weekend, the stage is set for what will be the oldest quarterback matchup in NFL history. This weekend, the New Orleans Saints will host the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, putting Brady at 43 against Brees at 41. I watched all the games this weekend. It was awesome. Cleveland last night, you were waiting for Cleveland to be Cleveland. You were waiting. It started great. Snap over Roethlisberger's head, which, by the way, is a hard thing to do. He's like 6'6". First play of the game, Cleveland takes the lead. They get an interception, drive down, score another. Next thing you know, it's 28 to nothing. but you were waiting for Cleveland to be Cleveland. And Cleveland had all of it going against them this week. They had... Key players out with coronavirus. Their head coach, their coordinators were out with. The guy coaching the team was a guy that was born and bred in Cleveland, is a diehard Browns fan. He's their special teams coach. One of the linemen they have to have come in, nobody had ever met him before. They saw tape of him, they signed him, and they have a chance to practice because the facilities were closed. But they won. Nickelodeon. Hosting one of the games was hilarious. It was just, it was a good game all around. It's a lot of fun. And so this weekend, I'm pumped. I mean, and, and you know what the great thing about it was? People that I see on my Twitter feed who normally, you know, talk politics, and they will argue and they'll get into it with people. I said, I'm watching games this weekend, and I'm excited because I'm not going to be talking politics and even thinking about it because I just was pumped about Wild Card Weekend. And it was amazing how many of them engaged from both sides of the aisle. Who would win? Who do you like? What do you do? And that shows you there's so much commonality out there. Some people, they've, they, they've, they've now just encircled themselves in, in everything that is chaos and craziness when it comes to Trump and the election. But I think the majority of people, in fact, I know for a fact the majority, the 70, 80 plus percent of people... They lean a little right, they lean a little left, but they all kind of want the same things. We may want to get there, but take different paths. It's kind of what they're saying and saying. And that was just refreshing to see people talk, to see people I know that saw that tweet who only ever tweet things at me when it comes to politics. Say, hey, Chad, who thinks, do you, th- do you think you know, Cleveland has a chance? Did you see the George Blanda 
Tom, you know, Tom Brady comparison. By the way, George Blanda was up until this weekend was the oldest quarterback, I think, starting the NFL in a playoff game. And uh, Tom Brady beat that. And they did a side by side picture from when Blanda played. And uh, my God. Tom Brady, uh, that should be your your TB12, which is your 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 other business about nutrition and all that. That should be, hey, you could be this or you could be this TB12, because it looked like he was thirty and Blanda looked like he was seventy, and they were the same age. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter, tweet at us. Parlor gone completely offline right now. We need to have discussion about this. Free speech in America. What kind of bias is out there? How real is it or isn't it? We're going to talk about that. Are some of the Republicans that have, have, have gone through to protect the president at all costs, has that cost them in the future? Speaking of sports, Trump gets a blow in a major way, to his ego and to his golf game, if you will. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Do you think the president should be impeached? Would you vote to remove him from office? So I think the president did commit impeachable offenses. A uh, little doubt in my mind about that. I don't know as a practical matter that it is actually even possible to do an impeachment in the handful of days that are left. It's likely that if the House does pass articles of impeachment, we wouldn't get them till. I don't know, Tuesday or Wednesday, we're literally less than one week to go at that point. I'm also not at all clear that it's constitutionally permissible to impeach someone after they have left office. Well, we're going to find out what happens because uh, it's done. It's official. Now, they won't vote on it till later on in the week. They've introduced articles of impeachment and, you know, the debate and blah, blah, blah. We've been talking about it throughout the day. Uh, should Trump resign? Would that be the easiest path forward in in this uh that right there was pat Toomey, republican the second one now to get on board with it's time for trump to go your republican right. colleague senator lisa murkowski of alaska says president trump should resign do you agree yeah i do i think at this point with just a few days left it's um the best path forward the best way to get this person in the rearview mirror uh, for us. Uh, that could happen immediately. I'm not optimistic it will, but uh, I do think that would be the best way forward. Does it heal the country? Remember, that's a lot of what, you know, you'll look at Ford, what we what Ford do. Let's heal the country. Let's move on. Trump did something. I, I have to be honest with you. Trump did something. And what took place in his name, whether you want to believe it or not, or you're living in the world of what took place the other day, uh, I goes worse than what Nixon did. And I think this is the 1st of December. I think there's no doubt. Now, some people are thinking, hey, if we can do this now and it gets introduced to the, you know, the Senate finally gets it, say, Tuesday, Wednesday, and they, they continue to go on because there's that whole, is it constitutional because they're out of office? Can we do this? I think a lot of what it's about is what? Him running again. Him running again. And I think the Republicans are as worried as anybody else. Could he? It's possible. Totally. If he's not barred from it, he totally could do it. Now, there may be behind-the-scenes things, as there always is in any of these things, where people are negotiating with Trump, saying, look, here's the deal. You promise us you will never run again. They'll let everybody know that you're not going to run again. We'll give you a pardon, and we'll allow you to get the hell out of here 
and we're going to try to re, you know try to try to rebuild back some of this stuff division wise that we have some of the trust and there's always going to be on trust with the extremes hell people that support Trump don't trust a lot of the stuff and people around Trump I mean that's I mean they they're screaming hang pence the other day for god's sakes it's not a big deal chad they're just kidding shut up that's insane it really is it's nuts so behind the scenes there's probably some stuff going on of how do you want to end this what does this look like how can we either get you to peacefully move out of here asap cuz that's one of the things is in this introduction essentially it's hey biden you do something or we'll do something i mean not biden but uh pence you do something or we'll do something does it help with the healing of the country i don't think it does could it cause more problems absolutely 100% Remember, for so many of these people, this election has never been about the elections and the integrity of elections going forward. This is about Trump's election. That's it. We have two pandemics raging through this country right now. One of them is this COVID-19 pandemic, and the other is a pandemic of division and distrust. The way to deal with them is by telling people the truth, that vaccines work, that we need good role models in terms of masking and social distancing, and that this was a free and fair election where Joe Biden was elected. We need folks who are willing to stand up and tell the truth in Congress. Yeah. And we do have a, we, we do have a, a, a pandemic of fake news, half news. Most of the fake news isn't fake news. What it is, it's half news. It's lies, embellishment, sprinkled in with a bit of truth, or it's just, I'm only going to tell my side of a story. And that's sad. And that's where we are. Chris Coons continues to go on. Will you accept Joe Biden as president? No, he'll never be my president. Okay. But you know, you accept that he's going to be inaugurated. No, I don't. I mean, how could that change at this point? Well, it could be a civil war. You never know. You don't actually want a civil war, do you? I don't. You don't show us the voting machines. Show us the ballots. Show us that this was a fair election or we'll never accept another vote again. Ever. You wouldn't accept it then. By the way, people that are that gone... We'll never accept it. People that are that gone. You know, Chris uh, Kuhn said earlier, there, there, there is a, a pandemic of mistrust and all this stuff and, and, you know, fake news. But people like that, we have a pandemic of people who are just lost, who don't get it. If you showed them everything, they still wouldn't believe it. If you went person to person, they still wouldn't believe it. Some people will never believe it because believing something like that would then challenge their beliefs of themselves as human beings. And that and that's the problem. That's the problem with it. It's tough to say we made a mistake. It's tough to say, wow. I was wrong. We just don't do that in this country. We don't. So the best thing to do is scream and yell. And that's the thing I think I take away from all of this over the last several Several, several months and and really few years, but really the ramp up over the last year, year and a half is the fact that so many people are so deep into this that you're not pulling them out. And I've had talks with them. 
And I've had, I've had friends, people I've known for a long time, people I've respected, who have gone down this bizarre world and rabbit hole where everything in their life is, you know, the only thing that encompasses their life now is is Trump and him and his his rallies, his all all that is him and the stolen election. There was nothing else out there for them anymore. I've seen it with their wives and husbands and the way their kids are. I mean, it's 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 weird. And it's sad. It's a sad, sad situation that, that I see people like that. And that's the thing that's been the most discouraging to me, along with all of the other chaos, is the fact that they buy into it. And there's nothing you can do. That guy right there, if you showed him everything, A, he probably wouldn't get 99% of it. I don't even know what I'm looking at. Okay, then. And B, still wouldn't believe it. Still wouldn't believe it. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to change somebody's mind. People are willing to run into our capital like that, do what they did. You're, you're, you're not fixing that. You're, you're not going to fix that, that, that thought process in their mind. Because if you challenge any of their facts with your facts or with other facts or with, with, with an intermediary of facts that go against their facts, to them, it's going against them. Not their facts, but them. That's hard to do to tell somebody that it's a lie. That's hard to do. You mean he lied to me? You mean none of this was real? I'll say it again before everybody jumps down my throat. The integrity of the elections, we absolutely must make sure we have secure elections. 100%. We need to look into all of these things. But no matter how many times we've looked into things, have you noticed that even when it comes up with nothing over and over again, it's never good enough. But we should always make sure that we're moving forward with our elections, trying to make them secure and easier for people to vote and more secure. But if this is what it's going to be going forward, where we never, we have a not my president and everything was stolen from me, that is not good. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Let's touch on Twitter, Parler. As well, or not well anymore, because it's not around. We're going to talk about that. It's the Chad Benson Show. Serving up talk radio medium rare and dripping with irony. It's Chad Benson. It's an assault on everybody. They all work together to make sure at the same time we would lose access to not only our apps, but they're actually shutting all of our servers off tonight, off the Internet. They they made an attempt to not only kill the apps, but to actually destroy the entire company. And and they're they're trying to falsely claim that we were somehow responsible for the events that occurred on the 6th. That right there is Parler CEO John Mates talking about him being shut down parlor's done it's over with i don't think i i can't hold them responsible should they have moderated uh people say there is no moderation there is some moderation but it's not a lot and you know this goes back to it's this this is their platform and other companies like apple google want no part of them uh, and to facilitate anything for them and freedom of speech needs to be protected we can go over it again and again you know look if you're advocating violence at all these platforms shouldn't have you on should make sure that you don't have and there was things like you know hang pants trending and things of that nature 
That's insane. The right feels like, hey, we get trashed by the left-leaning big tech companies. And the reality is, it's true. It's very true. More often than not, the people who get censured or the people who get shut down are people on the right compared to the left. I'm in the center. I have some liberal ideas. I have conservative ideas. And I've seen it firsthand over and over again. It's it, And we should be alarmed by this. Today, Twitter's taking a hit. And by that, I mean a stock hit. Big time. On top of that, chaos and craziness, because that's the world we live in. Around Twitter headquarters in downtown San Francisco, now barricades surround the building and uniformed police are on guard. It's been rumored there will be a pro-Trump protest outside of the building. Police say they have plenty of resources and are ready. Twitter saying the building has been virtually empty since March with almost its entire workforce at home. Twitter saying employee safety is its top priority. As it should be. Because people, as we have seen, can get unhinged really quick. We need to protect free speech. We do. And part of that comes with the responsibility we have when we have these platforms. We become emotional, too many times people do, and they say things that are horrific, and sometimes those people believe them 24-7, and sometimes it's something stupid. It's a small minority group of people that do it. I think parlors should have a right to exist. The beauty of our country, though, we do live in a free society where you could start your own. That's what everybody says. Well, Parler has, and still it's getting shut down. They're going to have to figure out if they want to continue how they go about doing it. Speech needs to be protected. The, the, the war that's going on isn't going to be the civil war of everybody taking up arms. It's the cultural war. And the left has a monopoly on big tech and a lot of media. Media. The establishment media. Trump shouldn't be frozen out or censored. He shouldn't. I understand why they think they had a right and a duty to do something like this. But no, we can't silence opposing voices. And when you start to send opposing voices to other places where they can go and get into an echo chamber, that also is a recipe for disaster. It is. This goes back to us learning how to have dialogue, debate, and even at times argue the correct way comparatively to what we have now. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter National championship game tonight, I have Alabama never vet against Bama. Earlier, we've been talking with our good friend Kimmy, who's in for the next couple weeks, for Phil, who's been exposed to the virus. Uh, We've been doing a spelling bee, and because we have the 50 most misspelled words. Are you ready, Miss Kimmy, for another word? Lay it on me. Sincerely. Sincerely. Oh, I've been spelling this wrong for years. S I N C E R E L Y. S I N C E R E L E Y is correct. Ding 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 ding. <laughs> All right. Here's another one. Are you ready? Let's go. This one could be tough. Oh no. A lot of people get this one wrong. I get it. Are you ready? Ready. On your mark, get set. Noticeable. 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 N-O-T-I-C-A-B-L-E. N-O-T-I-C-E-A-B-L-E. Oh, See? That's what I was you contemplating. Think? Yes. Yes. Thanks for playing, Kimmy. I Always. Like I did better last round. <laughs> you did. You did. You did good. You were. You were two. You were three for four last round, and you were fifty percent here. <laughs> there we go. Not bad though. Thank Not you. bad. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Be kind to each other. Right? We're not going to fall apart because of one man and actions by a bunch of idiots. 
We are stronger than that. And the beauty of last week, for all the chaos and craziness, they returned the work and did what they had to do. And that's something that we should think about more and more. You have a blessed day. We'll do it again tomorrow as always. Night, night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.